What's going on, people? Welcome back to the FF Ballbusters podcast. My name is Will. That's my co-host, Eric. And today we're talking rookie tight end rankings and just what we think about them following the NFL Combine and free agency. But before we get into that, Eric, you got anything for the people? Yeah, man. Just big shout out to our audience. Really appreciate all the support that we've gotten from you guys as of late. Uh, but we want to keep that momentum going. So if you guys are, are first time watchers of the channel, obviously, we'd love to have you subscribe. Uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy the content. If you guys are returning watchers and haven't gotten around to it, we would really appreciate that support. If you could hit that subscribe button, hit the like bell if you're enjoying what we put out and also hit that notification bell so you can see all of our most recent videos um, and leave comments down below. If you're interested in talking about this tight end class with us, we'd be more than happy to chop it up with you. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got, and I'm ready to get into this one. Absolutely. So this year, we're going to be going through a top five for these tight ends. We're not going to be going through a top 10, anything like that, because we don't feel like the class is that deep. But we're going to yeah. talk about some of the guys we feel like are the top end guys and who we feel like are just, you know, uh, people who could end up making uh, produ ah, producing at the NFL level. Um, so just starting at the top, obviously, we've got Brock Bowers there. Um, he's been at the top for a while. He's going to remain there, even though I don't think we've actually seen him do anything since the season's ended, right? We haven't seen him run, run routes, anything yeah. like that, because... We don't need to. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a clear chasm between him and everyone else, so I'd take the vacation, yeah. too, if I was him. Um, but with that being said, just in terms of who Brock Bowers is as a player, he's the most one of the most complete tight ends we've seen in a long time. He's one of the best tight end prospects of all time. Uh, he's measured in a 6'3", 243. Some people say that's a little undersized. I think it's okay. Uh, it's the same size as Sam Laporta, essentially, as well. Sam Laporta is 6'3", 245, so he ended up doing just fine as well. Um, in terms of just him being a receiver, he has been the leading receiver for Georgia just about his entire career at Georgia. So... He's just, I don't know, in terms of just all of these guys, he's at the top and it's a chasm after that in terms of value. But how do you feel about, you know, just this rookie tight end class and where Brock Bauer shakes out upon it? Yeah, I mean, it's not even close. Like it's, there's no question that he is the undisputed number one tight end in this class, obviously. Um, and, and probably the number one tight end prospect that we've seen at least since Kyle Pitts, uh, if not further back than that. Um, he's lapping the field when it comes to some analytical uh, variables like receiving yards per team pass attempt, yards per route run, especially he's dominating the field in that category. Um, first downs per target, he leads the field by a considerable margin, dominator rating, PPR points per game, missed tackles forced, like all of it. He's fantastic in every single analytical category. Um, and yeah, the, the only thing that people can really point to is maybe size concerns, but when you can get it done at that level in the SEC, you know, from day one, breaking out as a true freshman, I can't possibly use that as a, as a point of argument, a point of contention against him. I'm not worried at all, especially when he's currently projected to be a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. I have no concerns in any category for Brock Bowers. Absolutely. So I think that's enough said right there. We're going to move on to the next player on the list. And I'm sure Eric's is the same here because I feel like the top two in this class is pretty easy to shake out. But once we get past that, things get a little bit dodgier. But in terms of number two, who do you have at number two? So I do have Jatavian Sanders. Yeah, which is, I'm assuming. Yeah. So he's been our number two for a long time. Um <sighs> You know, football hasn't been played in a while, and so the idea that rankings are shaking up uh, might come as a surprise. Um, but this is more so just an indication of us diving further into the profile and stuff like that. Obviously, he's still the number two, but I will say he's kind of fallen back closer to the pack, in my opinion. Or, or maybe in a better sense, like some other guys have risen up the draft boards and gotten closer to him. Um, he still has a really good analytical profile. Uh, I think he was kind of average in terms of what we saw from him athletically at the combine um and so that wasn't the most impressive i think he had a RAS score of 5.63 and when it comes to tight ends like athleticism is one of the top variables that you need to look at in terms of translating to nfl success so him being amongst the lowest in the class in terms of RAS score is worrying to me um but the rest of his profile is really clean so i think he deserves to still be here also considering his draft capital his projected draft capital is probably early second round yeah i'd agree with that i think that 
it hasn't so much, or at least what uh, Jatavion Sanders has been able to show us, hasn't so much separated him from the rest of the pack, but it definitely has moved him closer. But I still believe, like you said, he is the number two in this class. An interesting stat that I found about Jatavion Sanders, uh, out of 67 targets, he wasn't uh, credited with a single drop pass on the season, which is the most Damn. targets without a drop in this entire tight end class. So he does have pretty good hands from what it looks like and you know, at also 67, I believe he finished the season with 45 receptions. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. I think so. How many off-target balls is this guy out here throwing, man? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But um, that's, <laughs> Yeah, that's another thing I was going to bring up is like Quinn Ewers really hurt the analytical profiles of all the receivers there at Texas. Yeah. Tavian Sanders, Xavier Worthy, Adonai Mitchell. So one, that's something to consider about why his profile might not be as high as it should have been. And also the fact that he had to compete with two other top NFL talents at that receiver group. Um, so all of those things point in his favor. Right. And when it comes to just his ability after the catch, he is still really good after the catch. He had like 346 yards, and that was third in the class. And he had 7.7 .7 yards after the catch per reception, which ranked fourth in the class. So he's a guy that it can go out there. He's not going to – I don't think he has breakaway speed. Obviously, we saw him run a 4.69, which was a part of the reason why we kind of pulled back a little bit on Jatavion Sanders as well. But as a complete prospect, as a receiver at the very least, too, he deserves to be up here. Blocking could use some work, but, you know, that's just something that may come along, may not. But he's a tight end at the end of the day. The team's going to know what his strengths and weaknesses are to start out with. So I like him going forward. Now we're getting into the dodgier part of this list when we get to these yeah. guys. We may still have the same guy right here, but I'd be shocked if we do. But let's see. Who do you have at number three in this class? So I have a 3A and a 3B here where mm -hmm. I really couldn't decide between the two. Um, but the the first one being Ben Sinnott mm -hmm. from Kansas State. I actually um, had him right there at my three as well. Okay. So we're in the same boat. And I also have Jaheim Bell as my 3B. Okay. Um, does he fall into a similar category for you or is he a little bit further down? I actually had him a little bit further down for me. I had Theo Johnson okay. in between Ben Sinnott and uh, Jaheim Bell. But we can talk okay. about it. We can chat. But, uh, yeah, so let's talk about Ben Sinnott first since we agree there. What do, what do you think about his profile and how he projects to the NFL? I just think, you know, overall physical profile was just, you know, amazing for this guy. You know, 6'3", 250, it's kind of exactly what you want to see. And ran a 4'6", so good size to speed combination as well. Um, yeah. He matched Brock Bowers with 1.57 yards per team pass attempt as well. So in terms of being a receiver, he's up there with, you know, I guess sort of the not the best of them in this class. I'm not going to say he is Brock Bowers, but at the very least, he is able to get things done. Um, he also led the class with 21.4% of his team's receiving yards as well. Um, I could attribute a lot of that probably to Brock Bowers getting hurt too. So there is some context yeah. to go along with that, but he's still a, able to go out there and be a top producer for his school. Um, I guess one of the issues that we kind of run into with a guy like Ben Sinnott would just be how he would be viewed by other teams. Uh, he was a converted fullback that ended up moving the tight end. Uh, so I would assume he's a pretty good blocker to go along with that. From what I saw, he is a pretty yeah. decent blocker to go along with that as well. Uh, he also had a 6.1% six, uh, 6 of his snaps were in the backfield last season too. So mm -hmm. he's able to move around the field a good bit. So I do like Ben Sinnott. I feel like he is a pretty uh, versatile guy. It just depends on how teams want to end up using him at the next level. Yeah, I think that's a great description. He's incredibly versatile. You can use him across the field, um, whether it be out wide, in line, or in the backfield, as you mentioned. Um, he is a little bit of a late bloomer, <clears throat> excuse me, a late bloomer, uh, but that had a lot to do with that position change from fullback to tight end. Uh, so his kind of best year and final year stats are going to be better than his average overall for his career. Uh, you can see that in his yards per route run where he graded out as among the top of the tight end class in that group. Um, also, what he can do after the catch is really, really impressive. Uh, I think he was the second or third best with a guy like Brock Bowers, who is known for being great after the catch, and also Jaheim Bell in that category. Um, but they were all like the top tier guys in terms of missed tackles forced, also in terms of yak per reception. Um, and then in terms of, uh, sorry, scrimmage yards per team pass attempt or per team play, um, he was also up there among the top of the group. And you mentioned the athleticism at a 9.72 RAS score. It's really hard to beat that. So yeah, I love Ben, ben Sinnott in this spot. Absolutely. 
And who do you want to talk about next? You want to go Jaheim Bell since you would consider him your 3B and just kind of roll into that? Yeah, I like that. Um, so for me, there's a lot of question marks in his profile and a lot of reasons why I think he's riskier than some of the other guys on this list, um, mainly being size. Um, I am a little bit concerned about where he weighed in at uh, for his frame. Although, you know, uh, when we talk about Brock Bowers, like he's not too far removed from that, but obviously he doesn't have the same profile um, on film or in the analytics to kind of back up him being potentially slightly undersized. I also think that he's probably the worst blocking tight end of this entire group. Um, and so if he isn't elite as a pass catcher, which I think that he has the potential to be, but if he isn't, then you know he's really not going to have a ton of value to NFL teams. So that's why I'm nervous about him. But the reasons why I'm excited about him uh, are what I mentioned with the missed tackles forced. He's actually the leader in this class by a pretty wide margin in terms of missed tackles forced at 0.38. Uh, missed tackles forced on average for his career, 0.46 in his best season. So that that means in his best season, he broke a tackle on like half of his touches, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, his yak per reception was great. And then if you look at him as a receiver, um, he was also fantastic. In terms of like his contested target rate, he was the best separator in the entire class where he was rarely ever in a contested catch situation. But he showed on film that he was also capable of going above the rim and winning in those scenarios as well. And the last thing is yards per route run where he shines maybe the brightest. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of average, he was second in the class only, only to Brock Bowers, but his best season at a 3.67 is the highest in this class. Absolutely. I, I love all those points you made right there. Also, I had some other stats to go along with uh, what you were saying with him as a receiver. Uh, he was targeted on 39% of his routes when he was used as an isolated receiver, and that was also second in the class as well. Um, but when it comes to Jaheim Bell, which is the only reason why I kind of knocked him down just a notch, it had to do with the blocking, and it also had to do with, I feel like teams are going to really have to get creative with how they use him, and we might have to see him use like we haven't seen a whole lot of tight ends used in the NFL. Um, just yeah. because I feel like a lot of his play and his usage stemmed around sort of like being used around the line of scrimmage. Um, when it came to, you know, a lot of his usage there, 36.5% uh, of his targets and 48.7% of his receptions came from screens. Um, but only about 100% of his yards counted uh, for those screens. So it's not like he did a ton, but like you said, it also helps count the like missed tackle percentage, stuff like that when you're catching the ball around the line of scrimmage. But yeah. You know, that only accounted for about 20% of his yards. So he is still getting things done on the outside as a receiver, like you said, and still able to win and still able to produce. He would just have to get used, I feel like, in some very creative ways because it's weird because you're drafting the tight end, but he really is the same size as like a wide receiver. He's just like a big wide receiver. He's a big wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. So you just have to kind of get creative with how you use him. But I still like him a lot. Um but with that being said, I know he's your 3B. Who did you have at your 4? Uh, well, so or five. I have 3A and 3B, so my 5 would be Jared Wiley, actually. Oh, at a TCU? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, I like that. Well, let me, let me talk about my boy Theo just a little bit before we yeah. move down there. Because I just feel like he's someone who... He just ended up really bursting onto the scene, I feel like, especially with the combine. Uh, running a yeah. four five seven will definitely do that. It, and it puts him in the 92nd percentile adjusted for his size. So he is elite when it comes to that, especially at six foot six and 259 pounds. That's kind of ridiculous. Uh, he's yeah. going to be a huge target, so he should be able to make an impact in the red zone you know, pretty much immediately. Uh, he had seven touchdowns last year, which is not the greatest indicator. It's kind of a fluky stat, but it was second in this class. Um, also 28.9% of his targets came inside of the red zone, which is the highest catch rate pass rate of any pass catcher in the draft this season. So red zone usage is there just to go along with that. I feel like it should translate over at the next level pretty easily. Um, but I will say he's not the best after the catch. Um, he is a guy who, even though he does have that speed, it seems like he hasn't quite put it together to, you know, do something with it after the catch. He has the lowest missed tackle rate per per reception of any tight end in this class with 5.9%. So he's a bit of a slouch in that department, but when it comes to just being dynamic, I feel like he is a guy, at least when it comes to, you know, catching the ball. Now, after the catch, not so dynamic. 
But when it comes to the options he gives you in terms of just being in the red zone and just what he can do around the field or even just straight line speed along with the height and the ability to win on catches like that, I feel like it is something that kind of bumps him up a little bit for me. Yeah, it's funny. Like, I think we agree about a lot of what we saw from his profile. We just had him rank differently based on kind of our conclusions from that. Mm -hmm. In the same boat with the missed tackles forced, he's really bad at that. Uh, yak per reception, similar category. Um, I do think he's probably, at least according to PFF grade, the second worst blocker in the class. That's mm -hmm. also something that's concerning. Um, but yeah, the RAS score in terms of athleticism, 9.93. That's, you know, it's really hard to do any better than that. Uh, it does seem like the NFL is very interested in him. His current projected draft capital is 95th. Uh, so we see him potentially in the third round a lot higher than a lot of the other guys that we're talking about in this range. Um, and so if you want to trust draft capital, I think that he's a good bet in that category. Um, but then as a receiver, it does scare me a little bit to see him as low as he was in terms of receiving yards per team pass attempt and yards per route run. Um, he, he was among the lowest in the class in those categories. Whether or not that had to do with just a lack of usage, you know, a lack of the, uh, the coaching staff implementing him in the way that he should have been, that can be a question for a lot of these guys. But just the results are the results, and, and they didn't stack up all that well. Um, but he looked a lot better in terms of his contested target data, his first downs per target data. Um, so I was really happy in those regards. I, I think he definitely has the potential, like you mentioned. I just kind of... I don't know. I, I like some of the more safer mm -hmm. options ahead of him, and that's what I kind of re reflected in my rankings. No, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about Jarrett Wiley out of TCU, because uh, I know you have him at the end of yours right there. So what do you have for Jarrett Wiley? We can have a little co conversation. Yeah, so he's also an interesting prospect with the profile. He's a fifth-year guy, uh, spent a lot of his time at Texas, which can be a knock for him where he was, uh, you know, a fairly high pedigree tight end. He came in with a pretty high uh, recruiting score, but then didn't really pan out the way that a lot of people expected him to at Texas, which brings down his um, his average analytical stats quite a bit. But his best season stats are up there uh, among the top half of the rest of this group. I really liked what we saw from him um, in terms of like his, his A dot and his uh, yards per reception. His um, his yards per route run was was sitting right there, kind of in the middle of the pack. First downs per target was good as well. Um, and I think when we saw him, especially last year at TCU, he was highly involved in the offense with a 0 .2, 0 .22 dominator rating, um, which was, again, among the, the top guys in the class here. And then again, with the, the RAS score, which I think is really important, and you'll see a common theme among our guys that are ranked really highly at 9.7 in terms of his RAS score. So great size speed combo with this guy. Uh, and I think he can also block at a pretty decent level so he can be used even if he's not an elite receiving option. No, I do like that. I think that he's a guy obviously with the frame at 6'6 six, six is just enormous. But also uh, one of the cool things I saw, 16% of his collegiate receptions went for touchdowns in 20, uh, just throughout his career. So that's just kind yeah. of insane. Uh, only Theo Johnson kind of rated above him in terms of uh, red zone targets. But in terms of red zone receptions, Jared Wiley does lead the class. I believe he had like 11 of them. And I think that when it comes to Jared Wiley... Me personally, this is how I feel about him. I think when it comes to him compared to Theo Johnson, I feel like he is a bit of a a cheaper version of Theo Johnson in terms of what he can do, uh, I guess, at least before the catch, because both of these guys are pretty bad after the catch. They're <laughs> Theo Johnson is the worst. Uh, Jarrett Wiley, I believe, is the second worst. So yeah, uh, they're, yep. you're not really trading up much for that. But I feel like what can be done before the catch and just uh, the dynamic – what he can do before the catch and just what his tool set is there, I think it does rank a little bit higher than Jarrett Wiley. But like you said, Jarrett Wiley is a better blocker. So it's kind of like you said, it's a give or take as to where yeah. these guys end up falling for you. But I do like Jarrett Wiley a lot. He actually was my honorable mention for this one, uh, at least one of them. Um, but do you, I do like that. Do you have anybody else for your honorable mentions? Yeah, I have quite a few actually. Um, and honestly, really once you get after... Ben Sinnott. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where our consensus yeah. stopped aligning. 
after that, these rankings get really difficult to piece together. Um, so any of these guys could have been involved in the top five, and uh, nobody should take offense to them being outside of it. It's pretty close. Uh, but I have Cade Stover mm -hmm. uh, from Ohio State. I have Eric All from Iowa. Theo Johnson is in there as well. And then Tip Ryman mm -hmm. out of Illinois, um, whose <laughs> analytical profile was terrible, but his athletic testing was phenomenal. Yeah, that boy doesn't believe in birds, though, but... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Birds are fake, according to this guy. Birds are fake. But I do like those guys a lot. I think Dallin Holker's another guy. Deserves a little bit of love out of Colorado State as well. Um, yeah, agreed. But with that being said, there's not really too much to say about them, so we're not really going to have the discussion. But definitely guys to have on your radar, especially late in drafts, just for guys you could take a shot on who could end up producing at the next level. Um, but with that being said, thank you guys for checking out the video. Make sure you guys do all that great uh, YouTube stuff. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when we drop all of our next videos. Uh, also, hit that like button. It's absolutely free, and it's the best way to get yourself get our stuff out there. And get yourself out there, too. You know, We'll see the likes. We'll see who likes it. <laughs> and uh, comment down below as well. Uh, let us know what you think about these tight end prospects. Who do you rank above some of these guys? Who do you think like we're you know missing out on or we're maybe even overlooking in this class? Because... Tight end has been a weird position for this class. I don't really know too much after Brock Bowers and, you know, Jatavion Sanders, how things really shake out. So if you got an opinion, yeah. let us know down below. And Eric, you got anything else for the people before we get out of here? Yeah, if you guys could do us a favor and just check some of the links that we have down in the description below, uh, especially to our Discord. We are growing a fantastic community over there. People talking every single day about dynasty, fantasy, startup drafts, all sorts of different things. So if you guys are interested in that please be part of it. Uh, check the link in the description. And then also to our uh, sponsors and some of our partners over there, whether it be Do Numbers, if you're interested in some really cool apparels, uh, apparels, apparel, t-shirts, hats, hoodies, merch, any of that kind of stuff. Um, we wear it in a lot of our videos. So you can check that out. And then also to Choice Music Group, if you're interested in some really cool new music, we're putting stuff out over there pretty often. And as we do with every video, we end it with some music from Choice Music Group. So be sure to stick around and check that out. Uh, but I think that's all I got. So if you guys stuck with us all the way until the end, as always, we love you. We will catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace.